Ladies and gentlemen, the trades continue to come in this afternoon, March the 7th, 2024, the day before the NHL trade deadline, as the Montreal Canadiens have acquired Jacob Perrault from the Anaheim Ducks in exchange for Yan Mishak. Two prospects who were drafted in the first and second round, respectively, in the 2020 draft. You might be thinking, is this a big deal? I don't usually stream every single trade. I didn't tra uh, stream the Anthony Beauvillier trade that just went down a few minutes ago. But especially as a Canadiens fan, someone who knows Yan Mishak's game a little bit more and someone who's excited about Jacob Perrault, this is one that I said, "Ooh, I think I'm going to want to do this one because it's low key on you know, an underrated type of trade here that could have upside for both teams. Both these players are still young. Both these players have had their respective issues in their, their AHL affiliate and their team's AHL affiliate. But I think that there is potential upside on both sides for this deal. I was a big fan of Yan Mishak, but I'm also a big fan of Jacob Perrault. So let's start looking into this one, ladies and gentlemen. If you're a Canadiens fan especially, you'll want to know who did the Canadiens just acquire. We are going to be looking at this one here. Frank Sarvalli reporting on it first. It was a one-for-one -one swap. Jacob Perrault traded to the Montreal Canadiens in exchange for Yan Mishak one-for-one. Any, I don't know if there's any other trades that came, any other details on that which came out. I don't think so. Just one-for-one. Blah, blah, blah. Before I start breaking it down, Mishak was just now starting to find his game. Perrault is a former first rounder with killer shooting ability. Yeah, he has a fantastic shot. Perrault couldn't find his footing with the Ducks, but will have ample opportunity with Montreal, especially being back in his home province. It's obviously a minor league trade that won't necessarily change much for the club in the short term, for sure. But I can respect the gamble being made here on a shoot first forward with a lot of runway left. This is Marco D'Amico, who uh, reports here locally. For those asking, yes, he is Yankee's son and Gabe's brother, Gabriel Perrault of course. Born in Montreal during his father's time with the Canadians. Yannick Perro, of course. Uh, anything else I want to see here on tour before I start breaking it down? I don't think so. Okay, so let's start looking at this. So, Jacques Perro acquired by the Montreal Canadiens, the 27th overall pick in the 2020 draft. He's only played one game in the NHL so far, but mostly that's because he hasn't been able to crack the AHL. I don't think it's because he hasn't been given the opportunity. He's spent now parts of four seasons with the San Diego Goals in the AHL. This year, 18 points in 31 games, which is a higher pace. How many games in the AHL? Is it 70, 72? So if it was a 72 game season, he would be on pace for 42 points right now. So he's on pace for his best season with San Diego so far. He's 21, has a ridiculous shot, 39 goals, 70 points, back with the Sarnia Sting of the OHL in his draft year. Now, Jan Mishak, on the other hand, good prospect out of the Czech Republic, drafted in the second round, 48th overall by the Canadians in the same draft. He was with the Hamilton Bulldogs, doing very good things, 64 points in 61 games uh, in his uh, last year in the OHL. Of course, an older player by then. With the Laval Rocket, he wasn't doing much the last couple of years. I was starting to get a little bit worried on him, but this year, 13 goals, 20 points in 40 games he's been picking it up it's not you know scoring wasn't always the big hallmark of his game he has a great shot as well he has the ability to score goals 15 and 22 34 and 61 you see so he'll score he'll shoot more than he'll pass obviously but Yan Mishak is a prospect who the Canadians were hoping to see in the NHL within a couple of years I think and hopefully Jacob Perrault is going to be that same thing so to quickly just read a little bit on each prospect, if you want to know a little bit more about each one, Perrault, when he was drafted, it was, when I look at the uh, the scouting report on him, Dober Prospects, uh, observations here. Impactful goal scoring forward with nice upside. Most recently, his scouting report says that he had an extremely disappointing 22-23 season with every stat being worse than the year prior. Went from 37 points in 55 games to 19 in 48. His goals dropped and his shots per game went down as well. It was discussed in the exit interviews that Perrault was dealing with an injury for most of the season, which explains the drop in production and the smart money is on an upper body injury considering his dramatic drop in shots. It looks to have occurred in late November as that is when his additional stats started to drop. The goals also were the worst team in the AHL and the lowest scoring, which will never help anyone's production. Perrault played sporadically between January and, and the end of the season as he kept playing through the injury. He should bounce back for 23-24, so keep tabs on him, and he's a good buy-low candidate, as we're exactly seeing right here. The Canadians are buying low on a highly touted former first-round pick prospect, and I think that this, you know, it's a, it's a classic story. Bring the Montreal-born prospect into Montreal when he's struggling a little bit, see if he comes out of it. We've seen it enough that it hasn't worked out, but I think this could be an opportunity in which it does. I could see Perrault thriving here 
not as a top six, you know, 30 goal scorer, but I think that he could definitely find himself as a top nine forward on the Canadians. Now, going back, it's going back a little further to August of 2022, eyes Habs on uh, Habs eye on the prize. I wanted to go ahead and and uh, highlight a bit of what they're talking about, Yan Mishak, when he was on their top 25 under 25. Um, yeah, hockey card value is going to go up for Jacques Apejo, absolutely, right now. Um, I want to read here. So Yan Mishek has a lot of experience for a player who turned 20 just a couple months ago. Now, of course, that's a year and a half ago. Entering the 2022-23 season, he'll have already played 68 extra Liga games, 22 games in the AHL, and three and a half World Junior Championships. So yes, we've seen he's played in the World Junior Championships. He had eight points in seven games, most recently in 2022. So he's continued to develop, you know, small sample size, but he's continued to de develop that uh, that production, that pr that progress as well. Um, at point per game player in the OHL, all that good stuff. After finding a formidable partnership with Yuri Kulich, he ended the tournament with eight points in seven games. Great. In short, it's been an eventful career already for Jun uh, Yan. Jun Yan, they call him. Even more eventful when you factor in the pandemic, which effectively ruined more than a season of his time with the Hamilton Bulldogs. So, um, of course, this is a bit older, so I could probably try to find something a little bit more recent. I just tried to scramble quickly to find what I could get. But all that to say, I don't think... I don't, it's sad to say that no more Yan Mishak. I think that he could have become a, a solid third line type center on the Montreal Canadiens. I think he would have had that shooting ability. I think, I don't know, is it crazy to say kind of like a Lars Eller type guy? But Jack Apero, right winger, right hand shot, dealt with an injury a little bit, was being buried in the AHL. I'm sure he wasn't happy. I'm sure Anaheim wasn't happy. Things weren't going super well in his development, it seems like. Put him on the Laval ra Rocket. Give him chances to play with Montreal Canadiens. He's 21. He'll turn 22 next month in April. If there's ever a chance to buy low and get something out of him, it is this right here, right now. So I I think this is a very, very good buy low trade for the Montreal Canadiens. And for the Anaheim Ducks, they essentially cut their losses on Jacques Perrault. And they can say, let's get a prospect that we have a little bit more, maybe trust, not trust him, but a little bit more uh, hope for in Yan Mishak. So he was drafted 27th overall by the Ducks. They passed on a few other players like uh, JJ Paterka to get him. The Canadians, I thought they were, I was very happy when they got him at 48. They'd taken him right after Luke Tuck. Of course, some other guys who went later on here at the bottom of the second round. Luke Tuck, by the way, what's up with him? Is he developing? A, with, he's still at Boston University, eh? Alex Tuck's brother, but I digress there. So let's go ahead and just get back to your comments here. Thoughts in the chat are coming in here. Uh, <laughs> Montreal, try not to buy low on the kids' channel. That's very true. Canes love to buy low on those types of players. You see it in, I don't know, like Leah Anderson most recently. And here you go. It's a pretty even trade. Yeah, it's a pretty even trade. It's just I'm seeing it a bit more from the from the um, from a um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say from, a, I guess, a Canadian's point of view. I'm trying to look at it as uh, objectively as possible, though. Making small trades with the Ducks is a sign to me that the Zegers thing happens at the draft. Interesting. The name that made the most sense to me for both teams was Gooley. Equal risk and reward for both teams. I don't think the Canadians want to trade Caden Gooley. I think they really have him as the long term left side guy. I think that's definitely going to be it. But I like this trade a lot for the Montreal Canadiens. Let me just pull up a bit more on Jan Mishek if you're an Anaheim Ducks fan. Um, like I said, from what I from what I can tell in his game in Laval, it's coming along nicely. I think that he has good vision. I think he has I think he has good puck handling. I think he has a good shot as well as evidenced by his ratio of goals to assists, I think as well. Um, but for the potential upside, I think it's lower lower ceiling higher what how are you trying to say it like the higher risk but the higher reward goes to the canadians in peru the lower ceiling but the higher floor i suppose yeah that's what i should say on mishak lower ceiling higher floor good vision not a flashy player here there we go here's what dober prospects have to say not a flashy player but with his hockey sense and good shot he could be a top six forward capable of playing both center and wing needs to improve his skating most recently in january of 2024 uh here's a good example here it hasn't been very impressive to date he struggled to find his footing in the ahl and on a team full of more enticing prospects he has found himself fighting for ice time there's still hope for the 21 year old but the steep internal competition isn't helping him much that's a good point as well was there going to be much room for him in laval or the canadians organization as a whole maybe not so if you're going to say let's move out the centerman who's struggling for the ice time let's bring in the winger who's a former first round pick get him back in his hometown give him more opportunities than he was getting with the anaheim ducks and i see this as being a win-win on both sides both teams get to cut a prospect who maybe wasn't working out super well 
And uh, I don't think any more information on that. No, they get to cut a prospect who wasn't super working out super well on both sides. But the higher upside, I do believe, goes to the Canadians in Jacob Perrault. Now the question will be, what happens down the road? How do the Canadians utilize him? Can Mishak find footing with the San Diego goals? That will be the question. So I like this trade very much as a Canadians fan. Sad to see Mishak go. I liked him a lot when he got drafted. But as we see, fighting for ice time, struggling a little bit. The production hasn't quite been there. Uh, on a better Laval team than the San Diego goals, I think. Give him a change of, change of scenery. Let him see what he can do with a little bit more breathing time in San Diego. And let's see what Perro and that shot can do if he's fully healthy and given uh, much more of a, of a spotlight, especially as a French-Canadian playing with the Montreal Canadiens, right? So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Leave, your, leave me your comments down here. Who do you think wins this trade and why? If you're a Canadiens fan, does this excite you? What do you think about Perro coming the Montreal Canadiens' way? Are you sad to see Mishak go, especially if you've been watching more Laval Rocket games. Subscribe if you haven't already for breaking news as it happens. We'll be going live all the way until the end of the trade deadline. Whenever a trade happens, we'll be here. So to break it all down, you want to make sure those notifications are turned on. And we'll be back, I'm sure, very soon as we continue to track Gensel to Foley, Bushnevich, and the many other trades around the NHL. Jacob Perrault, one-for-one one swap to the Montreal Canadiens for Yan Mishak. I like it a lot for the Canadiens. I think there's still a lot to be said. Who knows if either prospect becomes anything, but I like the risk and i think it's uh, the, the the potential of the reward outweighs the risk i don't think there's as much risk in giving up mishak as there is in giving up perro for the ducks but as we see you got to cut your losses eventually thanks for being here everybody and we'll be talking very soon for the next trade